Hi chemistry students. In this video we're going to talk about entropy, uh, a new uh, important state function, and the second law of thermodynamics. And to begin with we're going to have to remind ourselves about the first law of thermodynamics which is really just a statement of the conservation of energy. So I've already written down the, uh, the first law. It's right here and all it really is telling us is that any change in energy, so this is called the internal energy, any change in this internal energy we can keep track of it and we know that it's going to change by either going in or out of the system in the form of heat which is given the symbol Q or work which is given the symbol W. So those things have been discussed before when you uh, took an earlier chemistry class and covered what's called thermochemistry. So go back and review those if you haven't, uh, if those look unfamiliar. So for chemists it turns out though that there's a, a more useful energy for us to play with and it's called enthalpy. So enthalpy is more useful for a chemist because it, it represents a, a lot of the chemical reactions that we do uh, in terms of how gases might behave. So enthalpy is a natural, um, is natural energy for chemists to use and it's given the symbol H of all things for enthalpy and the definition of enthalpy is H is defined, that's what the three letters use, or here mean, it's equal to E plus PV. So uh, just so you know, if we, if we needed to, we could say that the change in energy is equal to the, I'm sorry, not the change in energy, but the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in energy plus P times delta V, but uh, we could also add in this other term, V times delta P. Well here's the thing, enthalpy is the, is the proper choice for us to use as an energy because we're going to do most of our processes at constant pressure. So if we do a constant pressure that means that delta P is equal to zero and this term goes away and for us as chemists on planet Earth here's what we have for enthalpy. Now it's not like we're going to be calculating enthalpy in this fashion a lot but it's good to know that it's really just another form of energy. It's the energy, the internal energy, the, the, the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of our system, whatever it is, and then it's less the amount of work that system is doing to keep the atmosphere at bay. That's kind of like the best way I can explain what it's doing. All right, so um, as we think about this, part of our review is that when we talked about enthalpy before, you probably learned two terms about how reactions behave in terms of enthalpy. So reactions, when they change enthalpy, they get a certain name. They can either be exothermic or endothermic. I just wanted to remind you of that. And the pictures that kind of go along with this uh, vision of stuff. So, uh, if we were to draw a an energy level, or not an energy level, but a, a potential energy diagram for this, we put our enthalpy here. We'd say progress of reaction down here, and we have a couple different ways to draw this. We could draw one that went up, went down like this. This was the exothermic. And in this case, our change in energy is right here. That would be our change in our enthalpy right there for our reaction. We can also draw one of these for an endothermic process. This is also going to be H. And once again, this will be progress of reaction. And just to remind you, progress of reaction means I'm going from my reactants to my products. Um, the change in energy here, right there, there's our delta H of reaction. So uh, these are just some reminders, things you should uh, remember. Let's see, what else should you know? Uh, in addition to this, you may remember that we can measure delta H. We can do this. We can do it for a reaction, for any kind of process. And the ways that you might remember from uh, your earlier chemistry classes is we can do calorimetry. 
And so with calorimetry, we found that we could measure the energy flow Q from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. And it was equal to M times S times delta T. And if we do our process at constant pressure, it turns out that Q sub P is equal to delta H. So this is something, once again, that uh, is, is review. You, should, you, you probably should know this, but uh, in case you don't, under these conditions, when the pressure is constant, let me make that a little bit easier to read, when the pressure is constant and we let the energy flow in the form of heat, that energy all goes into changing the enthalpy of our system. That's all it says. Um, one other thing to think about is we often do this under what are called standard conditions. And standard conditions are real simple. All gases are at one atmosphere. Okay, so if I have three or four different gas particles involved with my process, each one would have a partial pressure of one atmosphere. And the other thing is this, that all solutions are made at one molar. All right, and when we do this, we would say, to, to tell everyone that we had the standard conditions, we'd write a little knot up here. So that's kind of an important little bird right there. Right here, this guy. You need to know that when you see that knot, that crazy little circle thing up there, that that is telling you standard conditions. Standard conditions is not a temperature. Notice, I did not write temperature down anywhere, so there is no such thing as standard temperature. However, for this class, if I don't give you a temperature, I want you to imagine that it's at room temperature, which we're going to call 25 degrees C. So just keep that in mind. If there's no temperature given, you can assume it's 25 degrees C in this class. Otherwise, use the temperature that is given. All right, what else can we remind you of? Um, <clears throat> there is an interesting um, method of doing calculations of delta H. We can use what are called standard formation so this this is uh, the standard formation data it's really called Hess's law you may not remember that but Hess's law and we can do this to predict the delta H of a reaction under standard conditions so in the back of the book, you'll find um, enthalpies, of, enthalpies of formation. They're given this symbol, delta H F naught. So this is the enthalpy of formation, and this is a standard enthalpy of formation. So that little naught, that's the standard. Where's my change in enthalpy? And there's the formation. And this is a way of representing the amount of energy it would need to, uh, to the change in enthalpy to make the molecules from their uh, the atomic versions that they exist in. So carbon comes as graphite, hydrogen comes as hydrogen gas. Uh, so I'm going to give you one example of that uh, real quickly here. And uh, that way you can uh, re recall this method, which is very important. Hess's law type calculation. So the uh, computer's going to speed up here while, as I write this out, but I want you to remember, or just imagine this reaction right here. Okay, so a reaction like this, to predict the enthalpy of formation, we would use Hess's law, which is this. That the reaction's energy is equal to the change in en enthalpy from the beginning, which is my reactants going to my products and change always means final minus initial so this would be my it'd be the sum of all my enthalpies of formation of my products minus the sum of all my enthalpies of formation of my reactants so when I do this I kind of I kind of write it out this way so for our particular example it goes like this uh, there's one there's one CCL4 being formed, so I'd write the enthalpy of formation of CCL4, a product. I would add to it four enthalpies of formation of HCl. Then I'm going to subtract away 
one enthalpy of formation of CH4 and then subtract away as well four enthalpies of formation of Cl2. Now this often confuses, confuses students what I've done here at the end, but I've just distributed the minus sign to the summation. And so what I always do is I just add up all the reactant, I'll add up all the products and subtract away all the reactants. It goes much quicker that way. And I don't have to deal with these, uh, with these signs that we play with. Uh, just so you remember, this guy right here, this one is defined as zero because Cl2 gas is the standard state. So hopefully you remember that from before. And these other ones you'd have to then go get from tables. In a book. You don't have to memorize any of these. They're given in the back of a book. And then you would go ahead and you would just calculate these. So what, the, what we've just seen now is, is, a, is a quick review of the first law of thermodynamics and enthalpy and uh, how we calculate things in thermodynamics. So uh, with the next video, we're going to actually move forward and play around with our um, play around with uh, the entropy, which is this new thing we're going to need to understand how reactions uh, or, or if a reaction will actually occur.